So now, suppose that we have a continuous function like f of x equals x squared, and again, we're interested in the area under the curve. You know, maybe this is a velocity function and we want to estimate a distance or something similar. So we want to find the area from, let's say, x equals 1 to x equals 3. So we want to find this area in here. Now, we don't really know how to do that, so we say, okay, well, how can I approximate the area? So we're going to start with approximations. Uh, and the easiest shape to find the area of is a rectangle. So maybe we can approximate our function with rectangles. And then we've got to decide how many rectangles we're going to use. So let's do a simple case first. So let's use, let's use two rectangles to approximate the area. And now there's two ways that we can, actually there's three or there's many ways, but we're going to look at three different ways that we can set up our rectangles. Um, so first of all, we've got to say from one to three, how wide are my rectangles going to be? And we use delta x, so that's a capital delta symbol there, to represent the width of each uh, rectangle. So let's hear, the total width of the interval that I'm looking at is from 1 to 3, that's a width of 2. Uh, so the total width of the interval, in this case 3 minus 1 is 2. Uh, and then to find the width of that, we need to divide by how many rectangles we have. We have two rectangles. And so the width of each of my rectangles is going to be 1. Uh, so now, for each of those rectangles, we can either use the height of the rectangle on the... We can either put the height of the rectangle on from the left side of the function like we have here or we could put the fun, uh, the right sorry the the height of the rectangle on the right side which we'll look at next but we'll start with this one this is called the left end point approximation in this case it's the left end point approximation with two subdivisions or two rectangles so we're going to estimate L2 so for each of those rectangles we need to find the width and the height so first of all, how wide is each of those rectangles? It's our delta x, right? That's what we just found. So it's delta x, delta x wide. Um, how tall is each rectangle? Well, for this first rectangle, we need to know the function value on the left side of the interval. So we need to know the function value at 1. For my second rectangle, it's going to be delta x wide again. And for the function value, for the height, I need the function value at 2, right, which is on the left side of the interval. Now I can go up to my function and evaluate these. So my delta x I know is 1. My function value, if I plug in 1, uh, 1 squared is 1. My delta x here is 1. If I plug in my input of 2 into my function, 2 squared is multiplication, sorry, 2 squared is 4, so I get 1 plus 4 is 5. And so using my left endpoint approximation here, the left endpoint approximation uh, using two subdivisions gives me an approximation for the area of 5 units. Now, is that an underestimate or an overestimate? Let's look. It's going to be an underestimate, right? These rectangles are smaller than the actual area, so this is smaller than the actual area under the curve. Okay, so that was the left endpoint approximation. That's one option. The other option would be to do a right endpoint approximation with two subdivisions. So this would mean instead of putting my rectangles touching the curve on the left, we would draw my rectangles so that they touch the curve on the right side of the interval, like that. So notice now, the width of each interval, uh, for each rectangle, is still delta x. But when I find the height of my first rectangle, we're going to use the function value at 2, right? Because the, now the function, uh, the, this rectangle is touching the curve at f of 2. Uh, for my second rectangle, the height is going to be the function value at an input of 3. Now we can go through and evaluate. My delta x is 1, f of 2 is 2 squared. Delta x is 1, f of 3 is 3 squared is 9. So we get 4 plus 9 is 
13. My right endpoint approximation with two subdivisions is 13. And as we can see, that's going to be an overestimate, right? Because we got lots of extra area there. So those are the most most common two rectangular approximations to uh, the area under the curve, but isn't, they're not the only ones. Another option uh, would be to do a midpoint approximation uh, with two subdivisions. If we do a midpoint approximation, then on each interval, we're going to approximate, we're going to use as the height of the rectangle, the function value in the midpoint of each interval. So on the interval 1 to 2, we'd evaluate the function at 1 and a half, and we'd use the function value there as the height of my rectangle. Likewise here, we would set it up like that. You'll notice that this is going to balance out a little bit more the over and under estimates. So let's go ahead and do this. So my delta x is still the width of the rectangle. The height now, though, is the function value at 1 and a half or at 3 halves. Here, the, uh, the height is going to be the function value at 2 and a half, uh, which is 5 halves. Now we can evaluate, plugging 3 halves in, so we got 3 halves squared, delta x is 1, plugging 5 halves in, 5 halves squared, so we get 9 fourths, and 25 fourths is 34 fourths, or 17 halves, right? And that gives me my midpoint approximation for the area under the curve. And you'll notice that the midpoint approximation value is sort of as we expected between these two other approximations. So those are the three basic uh, rectangular approximation methods.